What's up, crew? Thank you so much for tuning back into Scorpio TV. This time, we have Mr. Creepy Pasta. I sold myself on the deep web, uploaded October 15th, 2021. So, by the title of the fucking video, I can... I don't think I have to elaborate how fucked up and how dark this is probably about to be so without further ado man y'all already know all the important all the important links are in the description oh, without further ado man let's let's just get up in this bro let's this is about to be fucked up and dark i know it is like the dark web and you with well, the deep web same thing and you sold yourself on it <sighs> mr creepy pasta oh. all right let's let's do this Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and before we get started on tonight's story, I'm just going to remind you about the Chilling App. I want to make sure you take advantage of the free trial if you haven't yet. Chilling App has hundreds of amazing stories and curated playlists, or you could always create your own. The ambient menu has numerous background noises, and to be able to set any kind of mood that you would like, and it's completely and totally ad-free. Not only are we adding hours of new content every week, but we're really building something special here. I couldn't be more excited to have the opportunity to be a part of this journey, and I hope that you could join us. Download now, search your free trial today, and click the link in the description down below, or simply search Chilling on the App Store. Also, they're currently giving away a PS5 before Halloween, so if you haven't signed up for your free trial, I suggest you do so before October 31st. More details are in the link in the description down below. And now, on to tonight's story. He should have been a rapper. He was talking so fast. I am oh. what you'd call a crypto addict. For that... I was someone who enjoyed browsing the deep web. <laughs> I wasn't really looking for anything in particular, just curious Goofy. as to whether or not the stories I had heard were true. I mean, I never really found anything that creepy, you know, but it was my first encounter with Bitcoin. A few sites used it, and it was the first time I'd ever heard of the cryptocurrency. <laughs> as such, though, I had thought that it was a scam, you know, something shady at that point. And this is back in the years of 2012, 2014, so... As you can imagine, I'm really kicking myself for thinking that. Not buying a few coins. Uh, my interest in the deep web waned over time, but around the year 2017, I began oh. reading about cryptocurrency and that oh-so-shady thing, Bitcoin, on mainstream news outlets. <laughs> and that's when I made a deeper dive into the world of crypto. My goal at the beginning was just to earn enough money to pay off my student loans. Of course, nothing was ever that easy. I'd made nearly every single mistake you could make while buying crypto. Once I lost my seed phrase, I sent a crypto to the wrong wallet by mistake. I have FOMO'd and sold at loss countless times. Countless times. Twice I've been fooled by pump and dump schemes. Despite all this, my net monetary change from buying into crypto has still been positive overall. That's mainly because I wisened up over the years and I made back the money that I'd lost and then some. Of course. Every time I hear about a random coin going up 20 times in price, I do wish I would have seen the opportunity. But I know most of those coins probably don't have much value or long-term prospects. I invest in safe projects. But of course, like almost anyone else, I've been on the lookout for the next big thing. You know, the next big project that's going to the moon, so to speak. <laughs> I get an email from an old acquaintance of mine. Let's call him Frank. Now, Frank and I went back to the days when I scoured the deep web. Two of us would often exchange information regarding anything interesting that we'd found. I hadn't gotten a message from him in two years, though, so kind of surprised. God damn. Hey, I know it's been a while, but I saw this weird thing. I think you want to check it out. See from your profile that you've been in the crypto space for a while, right? What do you think about this? It's a site claiming to have made a new kind of coin. And there was a link to a website. At first, I was, I was really confused. You know, this website was on the deep web, but according to this mail, was regarding a new crypto coin. That, I mean, that, that that made no sense. When you make a new coin, one of the first things you want to do is get as many people in on the project as possible. You know, making all the information about your new coin exclusive to the deep web that was a guarantee. It'd probably never take off. Right. Then again, maybe they were making some sort of super secure coin 
which the government couldn't trace, so they kept it on the down low. Regardless, I decided to check out the link. The website was honestly nothing to write home about. It was decently organized, but rather plain. It looked like a website from 2007. I mean, this was definitely the wrong thing to do if you wanted people to be interested in what you were doing or convincing them that you have a great new idea for something. There wasn't even too much information on the site about the coin itself, with most of it linking to a video that they'd made. I mean, there was a forum, but access only to members. I'm guessing there was nowhere else to go, I went ahead, I clicked on the video. I'm sure, a dark room with a desk right in the middle. You know, someone walked in wearing a white mask and a dark hoodie. As he spoke, his voice was distorted. So he was clearly using a filter of some sort. Greetings. Thank you for your interest in our new project. One by which we hope to revolutionize the very concept of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. I've long since been a member of the crypto space, but I consider myself to be an environmentalist first. You must have already heard about the environmental impact that mining cryptocurrency has. Many people have spoken about that. As such, we wanted to look for a way to solve this problem. A solution quickly came to me, but it was a bit of an unorthodox one. You see, I'm a man of many interests, and the occult was one of them. One thing I had always been told was that spirits, demons, what have you, they always know everything going on in the world. They don't follow the normal rules of physics, either. It was at this point that I began frowning. What, what on earth was this? Was this guy really talking about ghosts and spirits in the, the crypto video? I thought that it might be possible to use this to our advantage. You see, a spirit can theoretically solve a problem in an instant. Time works different for them. And the best part is, the environmental impact is null. I was just about ready to turn this off at this point. What kept me going was a mild curiosity regarding where this guy was going. This had to be some sort of scam, right? But but what, what was the scam? Was he going to ask for a donation first? Or was he just trying to install malware on my computer? I mean, he, he must have made this video for a reason, right? I just wanted to know what the scam was so I could tell Frank what it was. I searched around in many books on the occult until I came upon them. They do have a name but not one that you can speak freely in this tongue. Suffice to say that certain supernatural creatures are willing to help us and mine our coin for us. Now, of course, you must be thinking that such a thing isn't worth your soul. Rest assured, though, that these creatures don't want our souls, simply our bodies. What? I told them that in that case, they should buy us all a round of drinks first. <laughs> Anyway, Goofy. the idea is simple. You, as a human, can rent out your body for a small portion of the day. In exchange, these creatures will mine coins for you. That's right. I managed to connect the spirit realm with the internet so that they can mine cryptocurrency for us. Right now, we started out by mining Bitcoin by this method to test it out, but we'll release our own project very soon. I can say, though, that I am quite excited by the potential of our upcoming coin, as it will be mined only by these entities. All information will be held not only by the internet, but within the spirit realm as well, so that even if every database on Earth was wiped clean, we could recover the data. For now, though, we're just seeing how easy it is to mine Bitcoin using this method. If you are interested in renting out yourself, you can go ahead and sign the contract given on our site. If you're interested in simply buying some of our new coins when our new project will be released by conventional methods, please stay tuned for further updates. Thank you. The video ended at that. And I was left confused. 
Making this all would have taken some cash and some time, so... Was it all really just a hoax? But how were they planning on making money out of this? With no further information available, I checked out their forum, but that was only open to people who would sign their contract for now. Sound really I took a look me. at this contract. It was needlessly long. And that annoyed me because I knew there was no way that a site like this could ever take anyone to court if the contract was violated. So, what was the point? The gist of the whole thing was that you would agree to rent out your body for a time ranging from one to ten hours a day. In exchange, you would get a set amount of Bitcoin per day, which it increased depending on how long you rented yourself out. Let's say you got X amount for an hour, then you'd get 20 times X for 10 hours. Clearly, it was designed for people to choose the maximum amount of time possible. It's like cyber prostitution. <sighs> Frustrated, I put down my selection as one hour and hit accept. What? Oh my god. A message popped up. This contract will be valid for one year. It cannot be canceled before oh, then. Are you sure you want to accept? Shit. I scoffed at the idea of them trying to enforce this contract, and then I hit accept. Oh my a calligraphy God. message popped up as well as an address to a wallet that I could unlock. <laughs> Disappointed, I browsed the site a bit more and saw nothing to explain what it really was. I could only chalk this all up to a very elaborate hoax. You're so fucked. <laughs> the next day, I went about my day as usual. And something odd happened as I left my driveway. This is about to get good. I found myself in an office an instant later. I mean, if I had been paying a bit more attention at the time, I would have noticed that I had lost exactly one hour. But I wasn't. I mean, I had zoned out while driving to work occasionally, but not when I was entering the building. I chalked it up to me just having a long daydream, though. But things didn't worry me. Not yet, at least. Something similar happened the next day. Though I had some trouble noticing this, as it happened when I was chilling around at home, and I just thought that I'd lost track of time, as the sky suddenly became a lot darker. The third day, though, it happened at work. I was in a meeting, and then it was over, and I was at my desk. On one hand, I was happy to be able to skip that meeting, but also I knew I was... Uh, I was losing my mind. The MRIs all came back normal, and the doctors thought I... I had dissociative identity disorder when, I, when a month later I found myself in my house with some jewelry I had no recollection of getting. I learned the next day that one of my neighbors had been mugged. I didn't know who it was. Oh shit. That day I suddenly found myself in a park with a shard of glass on my shoulder. Damn. I learned that someone had smashed another neighbor's car. Fed up with this, I installed a camera around the house to watch me. And that night, I saw myself leave the house and come back later with some cash. <laughs> cash I must have stolen. <laughs> yeah, I, I learned someone's house had been broken into that day after that. I finally put two and two together, and I went back to the website. See, I hadn't checked my wallet, but it had a substantial amount of Bitcoin now. And clearly this thing had, had not been a hoax. Hell no. They wouldn't be paying me if they weren't getting something out of it. Goofy? Whatever entity chose to inhabit my body started out by just mimicking what I normally did. But it was getting clear that it was getting more and more daring with the theft and the vandalism that it was doing. <laughs> I read up that long contract again. I saw no termination clause. I can't exactly communicate with this thing that takes control of me, and even if I could, I I have a feeling that it doesn't want to leave. Gotta read. Forum posts on that site are of no help, as a few people seem to be in the same boat as me, but they have no idea what to do. Gotta read the fine print. The site doesn't have a customer service section. <laughs> it's no surprise. Based on what I've read in the contract, the entity can't hurt me or my property or do a crime that would lead to me being arrested or the such, but it can do crime as long as it makes sure that I'm not caught later on. Vandalism can get you caught and hurt. Anyway, I, I highly doubt it wants me to be arrested. And arrested. He would not have as much fun as when I'm free to roam about. Right. In the end, though, I realized that I... I couldn't live like this. There's nothing else to do but wait for my contract to expire, so I've, I've moved to a very remote area 
where there are a few people around. And I'm, I'm glad for that so that this thing can't harm anyone else. I've even had to give my dog away to my parents for the time being. I don't know if she should be counted as my property, but I don't want that thing hurting her one day. I read on a forum post on that site of someone who found themselves with, with, with blood on their hands after a blackout and that they were freaking out or wondering whose it was. And obviously, it was much worse for those who rent out their bodies for several hours. I guess, I guess I should be thankful. I only agreed if... I only agreed to one hour. Right. I've quit my job. I only go out to town to get supplies when the hour is up. I thought about maybe tying myself up so I couldn't get out, but I mean, I'd still need to do things like go to the bathroom. And that sounds like a terrible way to live. It's been three months total. There are nine left. The coins I keep getting are enough to pay my living expenses, thankfully. I might have to rent myself out for longer if that wasn't the case. I'm writing this because I was curious. Maybe there's a lawyer among you who might be willing to read over the contract that I agreed to. I mean, if every contract has a loophole, I'd be happy if you could find one in this one. I can't go to a regular attorney, of course. Right. So then no one would believe me. I mean, where would I even go to dispute this? But if there's someone among you who's experienced with dealing with supernatural contracts, please do contact me. Possible. I'd also prefer it if you would accept payment in, um, in Bitcoin. Ghostbusters? Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and thank you for watching tonight's video, or listening to tonight's podcast. I want to tell you about one quick thing before we say goodbye for the evening, and that's going to be about the Mr. Creepypasta plush. There's a brand new plush that's available, and this is going to be running on, like, every single video, I think, for at least a couple of weeks for the entirety of this campaign, because the plush is only available for a limited time. So if you guys head over to makeship.com, then you guys are able to get this Mr. Creepypasta plush. It's super cool. I worked with the original person who designed my character, to be able to create this plush. I think it's it's something that you guys will really love. It glows in the dark, which is really cool. And he's super soft and cuddly. So it's uh, makeship.com, M-A-K-E-S-H-I-P.com slash products slash Mr. Creepypasta hyphen plush. Or you know what's easier? Makeship.com. Uh, there you go. And as always, I want to give a very big thank you to everybody who is supporting me on Patreon. A huge thank you to patrons such as... Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Brian Ars, Bobby Carmen, Stephanie Butler, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, William King, Heather McDonald, Reaper 61167, Alex the Sandwich, Darth Myber, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Ness 69420, Isido Hatred with two exclamation points, Nessie, Ronnie Hansen, Bardo Hawk 764, Melancholy Corpse, Herb, Harley, Billy Morrow, Madam Skull Bunny, Sashi Suzaku, Grizzly Olsen Dut Pro, Caden the Spooky Boy, Zane Nightshade, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Ashwood, Go to the Weeds, Jay, Miss Alexandra, Mr. Unsettling Spaghetti, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Azarine Fox, Fried Chicken 12, Freddy Krueger, Pie Nanny, Michael Scarborough, Freddy Inferno Cooper. One, Lisa Cottrell, <laughs> Caspian, Jordan Elves, Hades Nephew, Taylor Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Ooh. Nightmares, Kira the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester's Lampshade, Guy Harbor, Nina Smith, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, Trace Miles, and Corey Kenshin. Thank you guys so much, so, so much, so, so, so much for being a part of the Patreon and helping me keep the lights on and helping me get exclusive stories and everything we do on the channel here. It really means so much to me. I hope you all have a very happy Halloween and sweet dreams. Mr. Creepypasta, I've been following your content for a couple years now. You don't know me personally, but I have mad respect for you, the content that you upload, and you know, you you as as a person seem real humble and laid back. If there's anything that you need to talk about, you know my YouTube, hopefully. Probably don't, but you look at my uh, in my description. It's got my social media. That reach out to me, brother. Like, is there a problem at home? Like, are you on that shit? You have to be. You, you have to. You gotta be on something, man. <laughs> Cause that shit, that what you just did for like a whole fucking minute. 
Shouting out all the patrons. Bro, like, how? <laughs> I get bl mind blown sometimes when I hear rappers, you know, rapping fast. But you're talking fast. Damn near rapping. And it's like, it, it's just, you're so manic and all over the place. Like, I love that shit. It's funny. It's entertaining. Especially when it comes to the narrating. But then it's like, God damn, what the fuck? How the fuck does he do that? I wanna, you thought you were on that shit. Um, <laughs> but big shouts out to Mr. Creepy Pasta uh, for this one, dude. It's like cyber prostitution, deep web edition, or some shit like that. Like, so you rent your body out for. An amount of time between an hour to ten hours a day, and you receive Bitcoin. You you receive like deep web compensation and currency for it. Like what? And it says it won't. It, it, whatever monster or whatever possesses your body for whatever amount of time that you agree to, it it can't do anything that will get you arrested. Vandalism will get you arrested. Robbing a bank will get you arrested. Breaking into someone's house will get you arrested. Like what? So I, I don't know. Yo, your monster's a smooth criminal. Shout out to Michael Jackson. Cause I don't well, I don't know if it, it, it it's a monster, right? I don't know if he had said it in the video, but hey, that shit wow. You loan out your body and this monster basically does what it wants with you. Pause for whatever amount of time you agreed to like what the fuck like it let me know if i'm incorrect but bro that sounds like cyber prostitution deep well deep web style like i'm loaning out my body and signing the dotted line gotta read the fine print and all that shit for a monster to what walk in my shoes for whatever amount of time i agreed to hell no hell no I, well, I don't know, like, I want to say if times were hard enough, I would, but, but I don't, shit, sometimes I don't even trust myself with my own damn body. You know, what I look like trusting a complete stranger to possess me, basically, and make me do whatever it wants to do for, again, whatever amount of time I agreed to. Nah, bro, that, <laughs> he was tweaking, tweaking big time. I told y'all it was going to be dark and fucked up. It wasn't as fucked up as I was assuming, but it was still dark because there was nothing he could do about it for a whole fucking year. An hour out of each day, you get possessed and you don't remember and you do things that you may regret. Like, I I don't know, fam. I, I felt like I felt like he was bullshitting. Uh, I felt like he was playing around with his life by being on the deep web in the first fucking place. Uh, what did y'all think? Uh, would y'all do that? Like, if that was a real legit thing, like, you you offer your body to this creature or to a person who who has, I don't know, psychic, magical powers, whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, maybe even the deep web, someone on, someone on the deep web. And you get a nice amount of money, like actual like U.S. dollars, as opposed to that deep web uh, coin currency. But you don't know what this person is doing with your body, and you don't remember any of it. The only remnants you have of knowing what happened is like he he had money, had a glad a piece of glass in his shoulder. So you know something happened that you don't recall, but you don't know exactly what happened. Like, is that something that y'all would do? Like, I, I, I don't know. I, I highly doubt it for me, but definitely let me know down in the comment section if that's something that y'all would do. Um, that's This is the end of the video. I hope y'all enjoyed. I hope you drop a like, a comment. Uh, subscribe to the channel, make sure the bell icon is tapped so you will get notified every time I drop new content, which I do Mondays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Stay safe, stay blessed, stay humble, and I will see all of you 
in the next video. Sound good right there. That, that sound good right, right. That, that, that sound good right there.